Okay, then let's proceed with the microphone. Well, even though I have actually not even the six, like five minutes left, I still would like to thank the organizers for perfect job they have done. Everything is so well organized here. I really have enjoyed the meeting. Well, uh, here is the overview of what my group uh, and what we are doing, different things related to nanomaterials, uh, carbon nanostructures, and uh, composite materials, not only uh, graphene-based or nanotube-based, but also uh, boron nitride-based. And But now we're mostly uh, focused on transition metal dicalcogenides and heritage structures with uh, graphene. Uh, I'm sure you have seen this slide before. It's from the review of Gaim and uh, his wife, Irina, uh, on how you can make uh, 2D uh, composite materials by depositing layer by layer. I don't want to go into details here how this can experimentally be done, but we are doing theory, and we're interested specifically in how we can simulate this in the most accurate way, because computationally it's not so straightforward. You should find the match. And use periodic boundary conditions, and then Van der Waals interaction is also important here. Uh, recently, just you know, example of why these composite materials are interesting not only for uh, making, for uh, actually for uh, tuning the electronic properties and optoelectronic properties, but also in a quite unexpected way for protecting some reactive 2D materials from the environment. For example, now the diselenite is a very interesting material. Uh, it can be superconductor, charge density weight ins insulator. Uh, well, not that it's insulator, that's not, the gap is pretty small, but anyway, the thing is that the material is very reactive and uh, uh, can easily be uh, destroyed under ambient conditions. So one solution is to exfoliate in argon atmosphere and then put it between uh, graphene sheets, something like that. And this way, we can also minimize the electron damage, damage in the microscope. Why well, it's not working well. And this is what lo the sample looks uh, in uh, reality. And as you can see in this uh, movie, actually defects are moving. Why? Well, strange, but anyway, it doesn't matter. So essentially, if you look at total number of the defects, uh, they do not in, uh, the number doesn't increase with time, so this means that we need protecting the material from the environment. Another small remark, another project related to some sort of composite materials is Thomas Michele from the University of Köln, the previous was with Sarah Hayek from the University of Manchester. It's a composite uh, material which can be made by depositing carbon on top of uh, graphene on iridium substrate. I'd like to remind you that when you put a graphene or grow graphene iridium substrate, it develops corrugation, which comes from a uh, mismatch in the unit cells. For example, look at this area. Uh, the white guy is in the middle of the hexagon and in different positions with respect to underlying iridium atoms in different parts of FCC or HCP. I think the origin is clear where the notations come from. It's still the reason for the corrugation, and this also means that if you deposit something on top, like car extra carbon, here the interaction will be pretty weak and bonding, and in this area it can be pretty strong because material is partly already in SP3 hybridization. It may actually even, like, atoms go down and uh, more uh, hybridized here. So experimentally, this is what uh, Thomas did. And uh, at high temperatures, you really see uh, results on some extent, to some extent, can be expected. You have the densification of graphene. What's interesting that carbon goes through, as our calculations indicate, uh, so you can get the second layer at high temperatures. And uh, but the interesting thing is what happens at about 400 kelvins. Then you get uh, uh, clusters on top with atomic resolution. And making the long story short. Uh, uh, this is what uh, our calculations uh, give, and uh, XPS confirms that you have SP2 and SP3 hybridization in this area. And essentially what we see here, this is like semi-caps of fullerenes. And moreover, you can remove the substrate, and this material can be st stable, can be used for, um, you know, absor like even absorbing individual metal atoms, because these caps are naturally much more reactive here. So I would like to thank uh, my group, and uh, while you have probably, well, 
I hope you will ask a few questions. So the announcement of the conference we're having, organizing in uh, Trieste in ICTP, International Center of Theoretical Physics in July. The registration fee, well, it's 15.04. <laughs> Well, the, the deadline for your submission. And you are very, well, very welcome if you're interested in defects. Okay, once more, thank you for your attention. <laughs>